Yeah. Good morning. If you're visiting with us today, you're our honored guest. We are certainly excited to have you here. We'd like to know more about you and let you know more about us. There is a a friendship register on each row. We'd ask that those be passed uh, down at each time so we can get a record of everyone's attendance. And you can see on the screen our theme for the year, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so thankful that you are here because certainly the victory starts with worshiping Jesus and worshiping the Father and worshiping the Holy Spirit. And we're here to worship this morning, helping us in our worship. uh, Brother Jordan Coates will be leading our singing. Brother Billy Martin will have our opening prayer, Turner Foster, the scripture reading, Greg will uh, have the lesson, and then uh, Randy Moore will have our closing announcements and prayer. We are saddened to announce the death of one of our deacons, Brother Jared Holloway. Uh, He was killed in a plane crash yesterday afternoon, along with Tommy Nix and his wife, uh, Merlene Nix, uh, and our sympathy goes out to the Holloway family, the Sweeney family. There's so many other uh, family links here, blood links, as well as all of us who are linked together in the spiritual family. In addition to that, uh, we extend our sympathy to Dennis Miller in the death of his dad, Curtis Miller, and we're sensitive to all of those who were victims of the hurricanes, not the hurricanes, the tornadoes that uh, came through the south yesterday. Uh, Would you bow with me as we go to God in prayer as we begin our worship today? Our loving Heavenly Father, we know that you're all-powerful. We're so thankful for your love, for your mercy, and we're especially thankful for today for the hope that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, We know you're the God of all comfort, and we pray your special comfort to be with the Holloway family, with Sonia and Lewis and Sandra, with all their other relatives here in this congregation. We, We pray, Father, that you would use us as instruments of comfort reach out and support this family during this period of terrible loss. We pray, Father, that uh, we would be serious today, serious about serving you, serious about understanding your word, serious about loving you and worshiping you in spirit and in truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So I'm about to do something that probably, I think a lot of you, well, not a lot of you, maybe some of you kind of take issue with song leaders do this during worship, but technically worship doesn't start until I start this song. (laughs) So we're going to go over this real quick because I think the words and the meaning of this song is so important that we're able to focus on it. I I just don't want us to get distracted when we get to the end and it kind of sounds like two cats fighting. (laughs) If y'all have noticed that, it's been doing that. Um, So the majority of the song in Highly Exalted they have this little phrase, such was the suffering you bore for us. It is, um, on the page. Mm, such was the suffering you bore for us. And y'all, y'all got that, okay? Y'all are good, doing great. Now, the very end of the song, you don't have to be musically inclined to realize that that's different. Those are different, those are different notes than what you've been singing the whole rest of the song. So the end of the song is going to go like this. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Okay, so y'all sing it with me. One, two. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Go back. Okay. 
So we're gonna sing, we're gonna sing the first part, and we're gonna sing the last part just so y'all can hear what the difference is. Okay, first part of the song. One, two. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Very good. And the very end of the song. One, two. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Very good. Okay. Let's worship God this morning. You were despised, you were rejected, Lord, those who passed by, even the earth that came from the sky, such was the suffering you bore for. Oh, 
Psalm before prayer this morning be I love the Lord. <clears throat> I love the Lord, for he died my soul to stay on Calvary. truly thankful that we have the opportunity to be here this morning to sing songs of praise to you and to lift up your name and worship. 
Father, we, we are so thankful for all of the blessings that you give us each day. And Father, we pray that your love will shine down upon us today. That you will help us through the dark times that, that have come upon us. That you will be with us through, through the hard times because we know that, that there, are, there are times if we live right on this earth that we will be with you for an eternity in heaven. Father, we're so thankful that you hear our prayers and we pray that you will be with Rodney Goldstein and Laverne Coker and Wanda Hoffman, Tammy Prentiss, as they are uh, suffering at this time to give them the things that they're in need of. We pray that you'll be with Jane Allen and Ronnie Johnson as they face surgery this week, to, that their surgery will be successful and they will be back in your service. Father, we are, are mindful of the, the Holloway family, and we pray that you will be with them in this time of, of sorrow. We also pray that you'll be with the Miller family to comfort them as only you can. Father, we're thankful for the church that's a family here in Boonville, and we pray that we can, we can serve together and that we can always show the love of, of Jesus to the world around us by the actions that we do, by the things we say and, and do in, the, in our community. Always be with us and help us to do what's right in your sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The invitation song will be Kneel at the Cross. The song before the lesson this morning will be the new song, so I would ask you to please stand, if you're able, as we sing this song together. It thrills my soul to see the songs of praise we want to sing below.
Scripture reading today comes from Matthew 13, 1 through 9. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into the boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and he had, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately sprang up. Since they had no depth in soil, they, they, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no roots, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who hear, has ears, let him hear. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here today and being a part of our service. As always, we welcome our visitors and invite you to come and be with us again whenever you can. I hope that you will come on a regular basis and be a, a part of our family here. If you will, keep your Bibles open there to Matthew chapter 13. This is where we'll be studying uh, this morning, and then we're going to finish up in this chapter next uh, Sunday night as we think about some things concerning... Uh, the kingdom of heaven. My apologies, you have no PowerPoint this morning. Uh, I'm a little more uh, technologically challenged than I realized I was, I guess. Uh, I have a very nice PowerPoint at home on my laptop. Uh, if you really want to see it, I'll show you sometime. Um, apparently, when I hit the save button yesterday, I saved it somewhere, but not in Dropbox that allows it to come here. So I uh, apologize for that. Uh, we can make do without it. I usually check it, but with the events of yesterday and this morning, I just did not do that, did not make that double check, and did not realize that it was not there until this morning, and obviously I can't drive fast enough to go home and get it and get back, so uh, no PowerPoint this morning. I anticipated, I thought about uh, changing the lesson this morning uh, to in some way uh, honor Jared. Uh, number one, I'm not sure I could completely keep my emotions in check to do that. But then I got to thinking about the lesson that we're talking about, about the kingdom of heaven. And I thought, well, that's a pretty good way to honor Jared as we uh, discuss some of the things about the kingdom of heaven and the realization this morning uh, that uh, he was a part of that and that we can take uh, hope and comfort in that. And so we're just going to uh, stick with what we've got, and I'll, I'll do my best to make it through. Turner read for us the first part of this parable, or actually the parable there in the first uh, nine verses. Uh, if you look down through there further, you're going to find that the disciples there didn't quite understand exactly what was going on, and so uh, they asked him then to explain that. What, what exactly, you're talking about all this, this ground and these different things, what is it that, that you're saying? And so... If you pick up with me there in verse 18, this is what Jesus says. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown among the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfaithful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, another sixty, and in another thirty. Perhaps a very familiar story for us as we think about these different types of soils, different kind of dirt, different kinds of hearts, however you want to consider that. We realize that when it comes to growing things, that the soil is important. We know that, yes, someone has to sow it, and yes, there needs to be something to sow, but where we put that is very important. We today use different things to enrich the soil, to make things better. I, I realized this one time uh, out in, in Zenith. Uh, I was, had a little garden there, not, not much of one, a, a really small one, but 
Someone had said, if you really want to have a good garden, uh, in the fall when they're ginning the cotton, get some of that gin trash and take it and put it on the garden. And so I took them up on that and went and got a trailer load of gin trash and, and put that on my, my garden spot. And well, let's just say that when gin trash begins to rot, it doesn't smell too good. Uh, so I didn't have a lot of happy neighbors or a happy wife there for a while because every time you'd open the door, you'd get this awful stench. But let that trash rot over the, the fall and the winter and in the spring, uh, worked it into the ground as I planted my garden. And uh, I had the most envious garden in Zenith that year. Uh, matter of fact, things grew too tall. I, I was going to have to get a ladder out to get some of the stuff. But it illustrated, at least in my mind, that when you do something with the soil, it, it, it makes a difference. I used the same seed. I used the same plants. The only thing that was different was I had enriched the soil. Well, Jesus, when he tells this parable, he says, you've got to realize that when you're going to sow this seed, that there's different kinds of people that receive it. There's different kinds of soils. In other words, as, as you go, and, and I think he would say even as he went, and, and he talked to people and he shared with them the gospel, he told them about uh, who he was and all of that. Some people received it and some people didn't. When we think about the kingdom of heaven this morning and some of the characteristics of it, this first thing is it's got to be chosen. The point saying that is if you want to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, you've got to choose to do so. God doesn't force you. God doesn't make you. It is a choice that has to be made. And so he goes down through here and he talks about these, these different types of soils or these different kinds of hearts, if you will. And the first he talks about is, is when the ground is hard. This is the, the seed that fell on the path or the wayside. The path was, was too hard for the seed to take root and grow. Now, now think about, if you will, a, a path that has been walked on for hours and hours and lots of feet. I, I remember in Nigeria seeing this illustrated. The path over there, because of the walking that was done, was as hard as asphalt or concrete. That's what's being, being said here, and, and it's, so, it's so hard that the seed can't go down into the ground, and so the birds come and eat it. Jesus says this represents a heart that it was without understanding, a heart that, that is too hardened to comprehend the Word of God, a heart that says, I don't want the Word of God coming in me. I don't want it to be a part of me. It's too tough. It's too calloused. It's too hard. And then Satan steals away the seed before it does any good. Sometimes our hearts become wayside in different ways. Sometimes our hearts become hardened in different ways. Sometimes it's because we're just closed-minded. Or maybe we're unwilling to listen. Or maybe it's we just put up the defenses and put a, a circle around us. Or, or maybe it's indifference that gets in the way. Or maybe it's false teaching. Uh, believing things that are not in Scripture. Or, or maybe it's the deceitfulness of sin. Maybe it's that we're unwilling to repent. Maybe it's just that we're flat-out calloused and hardened. The point is, there's hearing here, but there's no believing. And in that, the heart is not good. Because the harvest is not good. The second example he gives is the ground that is of rocky. Rocky soil or stony soil. And, and, and there's a lot of this in, in Israel. And, and, and what's in mind here is, is a soil that's there, but it has a lot of rocks and a lot of stones in it. And so because of that, it, it's, it's, it's difficult for it to bear down. A lot of times in Israel, there was a, a, a pretty solid layer of rock close to the surface. And so it, it was impossible for a seed to, to, to begin to develop that root system. Jesus says this represents a person that receives the word joyfully but has no root. And when difficulty comes, they fall away. They hear the word, they receive the word, they endure for a time, but then they, they wither away. Just a seed that is planted on ground, that, that maybe there's some soil there on the top that can get it started. But because of the rock, it's difficult for it to go down. It doesn't survive. Jesus says our hearts are, are stony sometimes, rocky. Sometimes maybe it's that our faith is just too shallow. and We don't do anything else to get it stronger. A shallow faith may mean that we get upset over everything. That we major in the minors. That we make mountains out of molehills. That our faith just isn't strong enough to endure or maybe it's seen in the excitement at first, but we don't stay with it. We don't endure. When the hard times come, we're gone. Again, there is joy, but there is no root, and the harvest is not good. Then he talks about, talks about the thorny soil. The soil that received the seed, but the thorns choked it. 
It was good at the beginning, but there was, there was too much competition. And, and when the thorns were growing alongside, it just choked it out. It was unable to survive. This represents a person that allows the things of this world to prohibit proper growth, not have the proper development. Oh yes, they began well enough, but then the, the thorns, the cares, the concerns of this world choke them out. Sometimes we allow this to happen because of our worries, our lack of faith in Jesus. Maybe it's our, our riches or our possessions or our pleasures, or, or maybe it's just sin, Hebrews 10, 26 and 27. Things that get in the way, again hearing but no fruit, and the harvest is not good. But then Jesus says, there's some that fell on good soil and produced greatly. Do not have the problems of the other souls. Represents a person who receives a seed and it produces. Our hearts are like this in several ways when we bear fruit and we're faithful and we're obedient. It's hearing with a noble and good heart and the harvest is great. So what's the application? Well, if we want to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, it's got to be chosen. We've got to, we've got to make sure that our, that our soul, that our heart is right and receptive. Is willing to take what the sower sows. Even though we may not always like it. Another application is that when we go out sowing the seed, an understanding that not everyone is going to be willing to receive it. Some will and some will not. You see, hearing and doing are two different things. If you'll notice in all of this, uh, the, 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 all these folks heard. All these folks received the seed. The souls represent four kinds of people who they, they hear the same thing. They receive the same seed. But it also represents four kinds of people who do not do the same thing. Good hearts are fruitful. See, all of the souls here had a chance, but only the good was actually fruitful. We've got to be sure that we have those types of hearts. The hearts that are willing to accept the seed and become fruitful. Jesus begins next with another uh, parable in verses 24 through 30. If you want to look there with me. He begins to explain more about the kingdom of heaven and this time about the separation that takes place. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while the men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And then skip down to verse 36. And Jesus, said, Jesus gives an explanation this way. He left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. <coughs> the field is the world, and the good seed is the son of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send His angels, and they will gather out of the kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. So this time, He, he, he continues with this sowing analogy, but he, the emphasis on the separation that's going to take place. What do we learn from this? Well, what Jesus is saying is that the good and the evil exist together for a while. That in, in this story with the weeds and the wheat, there's good and evil and also in the world. When we think about the, the parable itself and what he's saying about this person that goes out to sow, we know that good seed was sown. It is something that was good, but bad seed was also sown. My understanding is this was a, a kind of false grain, a kind of grain that would, or a kind of weed that would look like the grain, look like the wheat, resembling it that way. 
The weeds the enemy had sown were known as a bearded darnel. It was a, it was a plant that if it was consumed would cause dizziness or nausea. But it looks very much like the wheat until it is ripe. You see, until, until the grain appeared, they looked alike. But once the grain appeared, they realized there was a difference. Well, it was determined that, a, that an enemy had done this. Why, why would you do something like that? Well, it was a common practice in ancient warfare to destroy an enemy's crops. You see, if, if you could destroy his agricultural base, then his military power would soon follow seat. Soldiers who can't eat can't fight. But at any rate, it was, it was decided that an enemy had done this. But notice the emphasis that Jesus puts here. At the end, a great separation will occur. You see, there comes a time that the weeds and the wheat, they have to be separated. Now, this could be done in several ways. If the weeds were few, women and children were put to work. And they would pick out the bad before grain was milled. When weeds are not as tall as the wheat, Sometimes they would harvest the weed over top of the weeds and then just burn the weeds down. Or this third option, and this is what was chosen here, the weeds and the wheat would be separated by reapers at harvest time with the good grain preserved and the weeds stacked to be burned. And so the owner here decided to let both grow together into the harvest. What do you want us to do? This You've got these weeds in here with the wheat. He says, let them both grow together into the harvest. What is Jesus saying in all of this? Well, he says the one who sowed the good seed is Jesus and the one who sowed the bad seed is the devil. The field is the world. The good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. The harvest is into the world and the reapers are angels. We learn from this that the world contains both good and evil. It is just a fact. We also learn from this that sometimes weeds confuse the appearance of who is a believer and who is not. We've talked before about Matthew 7, 21, where Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. You see, the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of folks who claim to be believers, who pretend they're believers, but they're not. Because Jesus says, the ones that are going to enter, the ones that are going to be rewarded are those that actually do my will. So we can, we can say a lot of things and pretend to be a lot of things, but until we actually do the will of God, we're not doing what He asks us to do. Both are allowed to live together until the judgment. Evil in this world is not going to be taken care of completely until judgment. The main point being, there will be a day of separation. There comes a time when those who are obedient, who are faithful, They'll be rewarded, and the others will be punished. There will be reward and punishment. The good will receive reward, while the evil receive punishment. So we have to ask ourselves, as we think about these first two parables, how is our heart, how, how is it that we receive the Word of God, and then where will we be on the day of judgment? Where will we be on the day of separation? Will we be like the, the wheat that is gathered, or the weeds that is gathered to be burned? And then finally, Jesus says there is a, a potential for growth. Go back up a few verses and look at verse 31. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. What we find here in this is potential for growth, like a grain of mustard seed. The mustard seed here is the comparison, and, and we know now that it wasn't the smallest seed in Jesus' day, but it was often used as a, as a proverbial saying to describe smallness, 0 0.075 inches in diameter, something very small. It's similar to when we want to express something large today, we say uh, a million or, or or when we want to say something small, we say something about centimeters. Not often given the exact dimensions, but the fact that it is small. Well, the point Jesus is making here is that it goes from small to great. It becomes the greatest of the shrubs and as large as a tree. That, that's what was so amazing. You see, the mustard seed was a seed of possibility. It began small and ended up large. It was characterized by loftiness, expansion, and prominence. Normally grew 6 to 12 feet high, sometimes as high as 15 feet high. 
the mustard seed is compared to the kingdom of heaven, what it will be. The man that sowed the seed is Jesus, and the seed sown was deliberately sown. It was not by chance, it was planned. The field is the world. Just as the mustard seed begins small and ends up large, so the kingdom of heaven begins small and ends up large. Christianity began with only one man, Jesus. It began with an unknown man from an obscure village. Carried forth by men without position or prestige. Grew from just a few persons with little faith. Grew into the greatest of movements. From Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. You see, both the mustard seed and the kingdom begin small, but have great possibilities. When the kingdom is ultimately revealed in its fullness, it will be larger than now. It may seem small, but is greater when we realize that it's getting bigger. This should encourage us when we think about the possibility. And then he talks about the leaven. The leaven, of course, is the, the comparison. and uh, it, Leaven is sometimes used in a good sense, often used in a negative sense, such as the leaven of the Pharisees in Matthew 16. When we think about the characteristics of the leaven, we realize that it works quietly. The kingdom of heaven all of a sudden exploded after beginning quietly. It finishes, it works. It works slowly and gradually, but consistently. It changes the dough, it changes things. Just a small amount of yeast leavens the whole meal. Again, I think what Jesus is saying here is possibility, power. It goes from small to great. It's about possibility. Jesus says the leaven is like the kingdom of heaven. And then it begins small and ends up large. And they have possibility. You may consider yourself small, but you have great possibility. God has made a habit of doing great things with small people. Think about Joseph and Moses and David and Gideon and Daniel, apostles and so many others. We've got to let him fulfill our possibility. I hope this morning that we can say our lives are what they need to be. As we think about these different things that Jesus uses as comparison, that we can say this morning that our, our heart represents the good soul that is willing, ready, able to accept what God wants us to do. I hope this morning that we can say that we're part of the, the wheat and not the weeds. That when we think about judgment, we look forward to it, we anticipate it with great joy and excitement. I hope this morning that we will realize just how many things are possible through God. That even the smallest things and the smallest people can do great things. As we go through this year thinking about being victorious, may we be sure that we're on the right track. May we look to Jesus to guide us. May we make sure that we are doing what we need to do and being who we need to be. This morning as we sing this song of encouragement, think about your life. Think about your heart. Think about those four different souls, souls that we talked about. Where do you find yourself? Maybe this morning that you say, well, my heart has become hardened and I need to change. Or maybe it's become thorny or rocky and I need to make changes. You may say, I'm, I'm afraid I'm, I'm part of the weeds instead of the wheat. Or maybe I'm not living up to my potential. I'm not doing all that I can for God. If you're here and you're not yet a, a child of God, have not yet been baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and raised to walk in unison of Him, we encourage you to make that choice today as well. If we can help you in any way, please come as we stand and as we sing together. <clears throat> The cross, Christ will meet you there. He intercedes for you. Lift up your voice, leave within your bed, and begin life anew. Heal at the cross.
Tom before the Lord said this morning will be Thomas Sama. Jesus, you are all to me. Why did you die? So very thankful that we can take this time to remember the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Bless us now as we take this, this bread. Help us to, to remember his death and take of this in a worthy manner. In Jesus' name we pray.
Would you bow with me again, please? Our Heavenly, Fa Heavenly Father, we again approach your throne of grace and mercy, thanking you for this, the fruit of the vine, which represents the blood of your Son and our Savior that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of the sins of the world. We pray, Father, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, that we might do so remembering the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so very thankful for all the wonderful blessings you give us. We're thankful for the material blessings of this life that you bestowed upon us. And now as we prepare to give back to you, help us to do so in a manner to be well-pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Thank you for being here this morning. We had 200 and 
54 in Sunday school. Classes that were 100% were the fourth grade, the sixth grade, three years old, and two years old. And in the worship service, we had 365. Immediately following the worship service this morning, all the children and their parents who are going to participate in the Easter egg hunt need to go to the little chapel. What we're going to do is all the children that are going to participate are going to go to the little chapel. We're going to hide the eggs out here in the auditorium, and then they're going to come out and hunt for them. And that's going to occur immediately after this, the worship service this morning. Then the fifth and sixth grade puppets will meet in the TAC for lunch after the Easter egg hunt. So if you're part of the fifth or sixth grade puppets, you're going to uh, participate in the Easter egg hunt first and then go to the TAC and have lunch today. Also, the 530 prayer session that is normally in the little chapel has been moved to room 102 today. So if you're going to participate in the 530 this afternoon prayer session, go to room 102 at 530 this afternoon, just this afternoon. And that is all the announcements I have at this time. Would you please stand for our closing prayer? Our dear, most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do once again thank you for this day and the many blessings that you bestow on us each and every day. Lord, the blessings that are so many, we can't even begin to count them. Lord, we ask your blessings upon the Holloway family at this most difficult time. Lord, bless them and comfort them, Lord, as only you can do. And Lord, we ask your blessings and when we, uh, we thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross of Calvary for the sins of the world. It's in his name we pray. Amen.